<laughs> All right, thank you everybody for coming. Hopefully this will fit your expectations. <clears throat> so what this, is talk, what this talks about is the end of the world as we know it. This isn't going to be a conspiracy talk. This isn't going to be some type of political stance, nothing like that. But we're going to talk about some topics that may actually hit some of those borderlines. The intent of this talk is really how can our mindsets, that hacker mindsets, actually save your life and, for all you zombie fans, save you from being someone else's dinner. A little bit about me, not that you really care, you just care about zombies. I was a corpsman for 10 years, uh, Fleet Marine Force, for those who don't understand that, uh, the, the Marines actually use the Navy corpsman for that, I was in a line unit. Um, in addition, also was an Army medic, spent a little time in a desert without a beach, currently a pen tester. Right now, and always been since young ages of reading uh, My Side of the Mountain, been some kind of self-reliance enthusiast. Always have to have this disclaimer in here. All this is to use at your own risk. But if you're using any of these techniques, far yard up Ships Creek. So why this talk? We spend all day talking about packets and doing all this pen testing stuff and these cool exploits. But after you've been in this industry, and I've been doing this for about 17 years in different places, you start realizing how thin that fabric really is. How much all this information we have really could just stop at one point of time. Or just small things have happened in life. How many people in here have, ha have been affected in one way, shape, or form just by the national disasters of this year in America? Not very many. Kind of interesting. So what are the type of things I'm talking about? Hurricanes, storms, earthquakes. Whoever thought there'd be an earthquake on the East Coast? Terrorist attacks, all the stuff you see on the news. Zombies, 2012's coming around the corner. See how that con's gonna end up. So on here, what you're seeing is an eight year span just of the United States, really showing the coverage of areas that have been clarified for disasters. There's only been a few areas in the white, as you can see, that really haven't been affected. Why do you think that probably is? Probably. Yeah, exactly. There's not many people there. So they really call it a disaster. If something happens, trees fall down. Yeah, it looks pretty. It's all part of nature. Here's the interesting part. Based on FEMA, we're actually at a pinnacle of the disasters being declared just from this year. It's kind of showing a trend. You, if you buy into the whole 2012 conspiracy, you could say that. You could say religious. You could say anything else. Just the statistics itself kind of says, maybe I should start listening up and start thinking about what happens. And just talking about earthquakes, do you know that this is just the past 30 days? Do you know that this many earthquakes are occurring all the time? All around the world? The world changes. It's been happening for centuries, millions of years. Nothing new. And for all of us sitting here feeling all comfort, right here is kind of giving you a little historical piece of. So who remembers the LA big earthquake that took down all the, the buildings and all kinds of stuff? the bridges, seeing, remembering all those pictures. That was only a 6.7. The epicenter was pretty local into LA area, right? If you look here in 1895, we live on, well, well this location here is right on the New Midland Fault. That same type of scale was felt all over the East Coast. It's pretty impactful, isn't it? You don't think about that when you move into Kentucky or anywhere on the side of the Appalachians that, hey, I'm in an earthquake zone. We think of LA is going to fall off. Eh, some people will be like, hey, it's great. Right? Didn't think about it here. But that's not the only thing that's going on. And this is a very, very convoluted slide, and I do apologize. But this is a global incidents map. I just found it actually doing some research. This is the type of stuff just in a snapshot of time that's occurring in the earth or around the world. So we've got, try to point out as much as possible. Can't hear. So right up here, we've got some radio radiology type stuff. Sorry about that. Uh, we've got all kinds of skirmishes happening. We've got some biological over there in the in the northern east coast. Anyone knew about that going on last week? Sure, a few people in here with classified, not raising their hand, being like, "Yeah, I knew about it." That's all cool, but it's something you don't really think about. So let's start talking about true APT stuff. We talked about man-made, we talked about a lot of natural disasters and a little bit of man-made stuff. Anyone heard of the Compton effect or straight out of Compton? So we all hear about this EMP and it sounds all cool in these movies, right? 
Well, now it's feasible. Yeah, yeah. Retake. It's possible to happen. So the concept of the, con the, the, the Compton effect is high energy being ignited at a high atmosphere. Basically, what would happen is it would cause a large EMP, an electromagnetic pulse for anyone who doesn't know what that means. What that could possibly do, and it's believed that with a tomahawk, that this is completely feasible. So if you follow some of the strange conspiracies, and it kind of ties into two things, there's, there was a interesting rocket that went off the coast of uh, California not too long ago, just 30 days or so. As debunking it as, oh, it's not a UFO or anything else, and I'm not saying it is. They said, oh, it could be a submarine. Well, the question is, if a submarine that some one of the stories said it could possibly be China is launching off missiles off the coast of our coast, where'd it go? And what happens if that's feasible? All our jobs, we're out in the lights. Not to scare anyone, but everything we know about. We talked about SCADA systems. We talked about heart monitors right over there with, with Larry. These are all things that are all realistic. We, we live in this, this digital world. We rely on this. We're built into the system of everything comes through there. The, the inventory that we get, the water that we, so we have, everything we come through has some way, shape, or form a digital world, right? And then I had to throw an APT slide in there. And I wasn't the only one who had that same idea. But seriously, you think China could have the capabilities of what they have? But let's get back to reality. So what if it's just a local blackout? How many people here have had a blackout longer than 24 hours just in five, five years? I mean, it happens, right? Anyone here have it longer than a week? Two weeks? It's pretty hard, isn't it? Started thinking about things like, where do I go to the bathroom? How do I get water? All the freezer is empty. McDonald's is not open. Can't get pizza. So what does this mean? There are certain things that are survival. And this isn't going to be one of those talks, run out to the woods and make yourself a large fire. I mean, those are all great things. But normally what's going to happen is something's going to happen like here. What can you do? What do you have available on you that you can actually take, it, take action? You're going to be sitting there at a computer. The power is going to be out. You're going to be like, damn. There goes my wow character, or whatever it's going to be, right? I can't seem to pwn that box because I can't get to it anymore. Now you're kind of stuck. So the things we need to talk about is water. And there are a rule of, rule of two or three, depending on what survival issues talk about. But basically, it's you can live so long, live two minutes without air, two, two days without water. And these are all general things, so many days without food and shelter and those things. So we'll go through each one of these and some, come up with some ideas that are around the things you'd be working in at that time. We also got to worry about first aid. Things happen, earthquake happens, you're going to get hurt, right? You have to know what to do. The tools you're going to need, other things you can be help, can help you along the way, as well as communication. You're kind of stuck by yourself, what are you going to do? You don't know what's going on, you're in the dark. You can't turn on XM radio and be like, oh, let's listen to whomever. And then defense, because whatever you have, someone's going to want it. Someone else is going to be scared. Someone else is going to be like, I need that resources. So you have to make sure that you, ta you pay attention. And I'm going to answer the question that, in my mind, this is no one else's mind, what is the most important thing in a given situation? Well, for all of you who remember this show, MacGyver, it's knowledge. It didn't matter what it was. A rubber band, a piece of gum, and a bicycle could take down the world for him, right? And that's really what it is. There's another thing also as well, it's keeping calm. If you start panicking, what's going to happen? You're going to act stupid. You're going to get hurt. You're going to make stupid mistakes. So obviously knowing what you're doing, understanding where you're at, what your situation is. So we'll start breaking down into this. First thing, water. You're not going to have bottled water after a while. You're not going to be able to get out of the tap. The idea of having it in your bathtub or in your toilet, it's going to run out eventually. You're going to have to be able to get for a longer period of time, some type of clean water. You have a flood, you've got a whole nother concern because everything that's in the sewers, everything that's on the road, you can't drink that stuff. It's not straight. So what you can use is an expedient water filter. What you can see here, it's basically a plastic bag. You can use just a regular water bottle, which is what's in this one here. And this is actually a test that I did. It's basically using rocks, sand, some charcoal, for those who are like, well, I don't have any briquettes around, if you start a fire and actually just burn wood down to a point, you can use that charcoal. 
might turn a little black. Eh, you know what? Water. Another one you can use is a gravity filter. This one cleans out a little bit more. It's actually just using gravity, running down a cotton, cotton string. It takes a few hours. It's going to take actually overnight I did this, and that's pretty much all I've got. Now imagine that. You need about two gallons a day per person. Something to think about. It's going to take you a little while. And this does not, I, I retested just to make sure before I came here with, co with food coloring, which proves it, it does not get removed the chemicals. Something to think about. Then you've got evaporation. This one's going back into kind of the wilderness style, but there's trees in most places. Who lives in a place there's not a tree? Well, guess we're all pretty good for this. Trash bag we pull. Roll a rubber band, let it sit. At least collect some type of water. And this one here, I apologize for the, the poor piece here, but it's basically a large glass container. Dirty water sits on the outside. You put a clean water in the, in the center. Basically just the normal ones you may have seen in Boy Scouts or on Les Strouds or any of those cool, I'm going to sit here and watch survivals and now I'm going to be ready from watching a show. See how that goes. So basically put a rock in there, evaporation comes through, condensation, you've got clean water. This is about the closest one you can have that will actually clean out a lot of the chemicals. It's still, still not 100% though. And then you're going to need to boil it, which brings us to the next piece, fire. How many people can do this? even on a lower scale, not just this mega one. One, two, three, four, five, six. I thought I knew how to do it really well until this, this summer I, uh, or the spring I went to a camp on this and I thought I was, oh, I'm gonna do this and acting like the eager, the eager guy and yeah, it's hard work. Since then, learned four or five different other techniques. You ever try doing this when it's wet? Anyone try doing this when the water's wet, not just in the backyard? Is it easy? Yeah, exactly. So. Not something you can do, but we're not going to talk about this one. We're going to talk about stuff that we would have as geeks. We're going to have batteries. Who here doesn't have batteries around? All right. You don't have any batteries? Man, he's already well ahead of us. So basically, and ironically, this one actually comes out of the prison system. This is what they use for the lighters. I'm not going to ask who's been in prison. <laughs> what you basically it is is two, two D batteries put in succession. You have leads on both sides. And if you can see kind of on there, there's a coil from a pen spring. That's kind of the big key right there. The other thing is, whatever you're using as tinder, make sure you take care of that, that little tinder and work it to death. The thinner and the more fibrous you can get it, the better it's going to work. This actually is off of a um, hemlock, I think it is. Or, no, it's a cedar tree, I apologize. It's off a cedar tree that I use to make the bird's nest. So if you're making a fire for this, it, that's the best way to do it. For those who have or smokers or just have matches arounds, this one here is just a, this is just telling you to divide them. You don't need to have a full match each time. You're going to have limited resources, so cut them up. Use them as sparingly as possible. The more you can save these resources, the better you'll have them. If you started a fire, any of the, any people who smoke in here? Wow, we're all healthy. There's a few, but it's fine. But your cigarettes actually burn for a long time, right? You can use that fire and keep it running that ember will continue to go. If you didn't know, that could save your life. We'll talk about another technique you can use later for a cigarette. So next thing you have is shelter. And it's going to depend on what's happening. I mean, if you're, it's a nice hot day and it's good and, and, and temperate. And for those who were hanging around with me, I forgot my coat, so horrible survivalist, I should get off the stage. It's a little bit colder than I thought it was. But if not, if you're in a colder temperature or if it's too hot, you're going to need shelter. You're going to need to make sure you protect yourself from the elements. Depending on what, what the temperature is going to be, it could be two hours that you live. Hyperthermia, that type of stuff. It may be that you have the debris hut. How many people have watched like, the, the survival shows or ever watched the survival show? They go out there in the woods and they build this debris hut and they're like, oh, this is great and grand. You're not going to have that many trees. You're going to have this. This is what your house may look like. And if you go across the United States, I'm sure there's houses already like this because we have all these 10 cities popping up. We actually can learn stuff from them, how they're living believe it or not, because you never know when you'll be there. What if you have to be on the go? I mean, you may look like a raisin. Make sure you're singing while you're there, but a little trash bag keeping you going. That keeps your elements. For, the, for, the, for trying to keep the water off you, it definitely helps. The other thing you got to think about, though, if it's cold, the plastic may make it a little bit colder for you. Another one here. So newspapers, trash bags. Take two trash bags, shove a bunch of newspapers in there, leaves or whatever else. 
got yourself an expedient sleeping bag. It's actually relatively warm. Wouldn't say it's the greatest thing. It's not like a cotton or down, but whatever you have, blankets or anything else you have. Food. Because now we're like, all right, well, I can't get my pizza. Now what am I going to do? I have nothing else to do. This is where it gets the borderline of the, the, the political piece. We all have this thing of, of being hungry and everything else. But if ironically, if you, if you thought about the stuff that your, your grandparents did, they'd go outside and be like, oh, here's food or wherever else. So the, the people who were here, the Native Americans were here for how long? They didn't have the supply systems we had. They lived off the land. Well, the acorns, doesn't matter what kind of acorn, is an edible source. So it was actually used as coffee in the Civil War. Um, you can boil it. It's got, a, it's got some tannins in it that, that keeps it around for a, quite a while, and there's a bug that comes in it if, you want, if you're really getting down to the good stuff, but we'll stay away from those. You can boil those and eat them. It's just like a regular nut. Pine trees. Pine is a pine is a pine. The pine in itself actually has a lot of vitamins that you can use for a tea. You're going to need that. Your immune system is going to need that type of vitamins. You're not going to have whatever vitamin you, you were eating or that, that variety of food that you originally had. Other things, depending on the season, there's actually pine nuts. Anyone ever had a pine nut before? It's a pretty common thing, but most people don't think, hey, I can go outside and get it for free instead of spending four or five bucks to get a bag of them. So another thing you can use, now you've got all these pieces, you're thinking about boiling, you're thinking about, I've got food, I've got to cook this stuff, I've got to make my nice tea to sit back and see what happens. Because in this time, if anyone, how many people here actually go camping? How many people actually go camping that's further away from the road and, and not pulling their stuff out of the car? It's a little bit different. And nothing against it. You don't have those resources. You don't have that tie back to the system. As you start to get out there and go camping, you, you kind of slow down a little bit. It takes you a little bit longer to make that fire. It takes you a while to set up your camp, to do those type of things. Now, if you do that for a longer state, you'll really start understanding what it's going to be like in an emergency situation. You're going to have to sit there and kind of, I'm not going to be worried about making sure I make that meeting at this time or, oh, my Lord, what's in the bank account? You're going to be worried about getting those small resources. But getting to this, this is an alcohol stove. It works on some other, uh, other petroleums as well. You've got to be kind of cautious what it is, play around with it, do a little research. And that's what this talks about, about you going out and doing more research from there. Two cans, cut. I'm not sure what the fiberglass does in this particular slide. I hired, I got it from somewhere else. That's what can I actually made. Basically, it just creates this fuel. It creates the vapors inside of it, makes this little jet can. It will actually burn, depending on how, how much um, isopropyl alcohol, about 10 minutes. And it will boil. It will create your good boil. Quick, easy. It's actually a fun project to make as well. <coughs> Excuse me. What about all those pizza boxes that are laying around? I'm sure we've got tons of those. And I know I'm hitting the stereotype, and I apologize. But we can use the solar power. That reflection, it may take a lot longer. It's going to take about six, eight hours. But you can use that. The other piece down there is actually from a car. It's the reflector in a car. Anything else you have, mirrors, or any of those pieces. Cat5 cable. I'm sure we'll all find some of that. It makes a great fishing line. Certain fish may be scared of it, but if that's all you have, it's good, it's sturdy. It definitely will catch a good, pa a good fish, whatever you have. In addition, you can just use it's a piece of rope right there and some Cat5 tied onto a, a fishing hook. I'm sorry I didn't make it out of paper clips, but fishing hooks were available at that time, so just happen to have those. If you really are in a pinch, you can try paper clips. Good luck trying to catch anything large. Aluminum foil as well. You can even use CDs or anything reflective to kind of see what you can get. Something to know, though. It's another thing, especially being a corpsman and a medic for, set, for long enough. First aid, you're going to get hot. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get cuts. You're going to get fractures. No, you have to have some kind of understanding of it. How many people here have CPR certification? It's not a lot. How many people have first aid or Boy Scouts or anything else? Let's take a look around. There's not a lot of people there to help you. Better hope that you have something to think about. First ones you can always use is super glue. It's a controversial thing. It's th there is a there's a medical grade of super glue, but a quick laceration, apply pressure. It's, quick, it's a quick little suture, quick and easy. And how many people have stuck their fingers together with super glue? I know I have several times. It's quick. It's easy. It's like that. 
And this is not the only use for it. Duct tape is probably one of your best friends for many, many things. But duct tape works great as a, bra as a brace. Anything that's, that's rigid, got a you've got some kind of sprain here, you've got wrist guards if you've got carpal tunnel syndrome just in case you want to still type somehow in the middle of the apocalypse. Not sure why, but you never know. In addition, you can also use, um, make it in the sun visors. I've seen people use it to put on their face actually as, as to help against the cold elements. Probably help also with shaving, I'm not sure. I don't think I'd really want to try that one. Hey, yeah, see, you never know. And I think you volunteered. Other things, baking soda, knowing what's around your house. Um, how many people know that Epsom salt can be used to start a car battery? Two or three. So the old car batteries that you can still get access to the port, if it's, if it's a dying battery, you put Epsom salt in it. Wait about 20 minutes to 30, 30 minutes. It'll actually reactivate it. It'll get you to start it back up. If you're stuck somewhere, unless an EMP hit, it's going to help you. But also baking soda. It can be used not only just for burns, um, for bug bites, for underarm deodorant, but also for an acid. There's at least 75 more uses of baking soda. Um, Epsom salts, bleach is another thing to keep around. You're talking about purification of water. It's another great way to start purifying your water. I do a little research and testing of how that, how that tastes. You have to get used to the taste as well. Something to think about. And I'm not going to make a full hour. There's no way. Tools. Other things you need to start thinking about. Is Murphy's Law. How many, how many people are enjoying this talk so far? Hey, it's good. I'm enjoying telling it. This is fun. You're going to need some type of illumination. We were, to, we're, we're told as kind of a society that anything that's out in the woods or in the dark, it's scary. More, we, have, we have media talking about horror movies and everything else. Um, it's all this scary stuff in the dark. The lights go out. We think of bad things happening. So we're going to want some illumination. Plus, we just like seeing we're not really bats or anything else. So just a little bit of, this is cooking oil, actually, with, a to with um, either toilet paper or paper towel. A little quick expedient canned heat. Or if you really want for those romantic rubble times of acorns and pine needles, you can do something a little bit more sophisticated. And you're going to have that time. Once you find, figure out where you're at and you kind of set yourself into that area, you're going to have time to think and make some, build some great things. Then, getting back to the, to the cigarette smokers or just being able to find those, you need cutting tools. Not everybody's going to have a knife carrying with them. And if they do, do they know how to sharpen it if they don't have those pieces? A uh, little sidetrack. You can use glass, you can use stones, or you can use a coffee cup if you don't have a flint or not flint, but um, some type of sharpener. But here, basically, you heat it up, you take a glass, and you press it down. Not the greatest cutting edge. I wouldn't want to go in a fight with it, but you have some type of cutting edge, something that's at least cut with. How many people were, were affected by Katrina or happened to be in that? Anyone? A few. It's a horrible time, right? Big floods. You're going to have to figure out some ways of getting around if that's your case. You have a canoe or obviously a boat or something like that, it makes it easier. You might actually have to get a bunch of two liters and empty them out, tie them together, and float on it or anything else you can find. And I don't know how well you can see that, but this the rainbow that's affected here, kind of illustrates the need of water. That's the oil sediment that goes across. It's beautiful. So how many people are, are not from this location? If something went out right now, would you know which direction is north? Some do, some don't. How many people did this in school? That's what I think is kind of interesting. You learn stuff like this in elementary school or wherever, and you're like, ah, this is kind of cool. Yay, it's a science experiment. Here, it can save your life. Taking a magnet, put it, running it across, put it on a, on a cork here and float it in the water will tell you which way north is. Unless you do it backwards and then you think you're going the opposite way. But eventually you'll figure it out. Now you're here alone. You've got your food. You've, you, know, you know which way north is. You've got your medical needs ready. You're warm in your shelter. Now you're feeling lonely. You need to figure out how to get out. And how many people remember this? This, this was like the coolest thing. Really? No one remember Johnny Castaway, the screensaver that changed every year? Oh, this is great. 
you don't look at it, look it up. It's an old one. It should be in the uh, shareware talk. So one thing we can use is try to see if there's anyone that's actually going to stop by and with their helicopters, usually they kind of float by and wave at you as you're standing on top of your house waiting for you. But you can use a CD. It's reflective. Basically, you look at you look actually at the target you're trying to hit, and you you use a little reflection. And then you wait for Mercury to go. So this is where the, the hackery really starts to get into. This is where that appetite of electronics, and, and there's only two of those good slides. Anyone ever heard of a foxhole radio? So those who haven't heard of the foxhole radio, in the, Alli the Allied troops in World War II were not allowed to have transistors because the, the Germans could actually detect them because of it. So what they did is, using their ingenuity, some wood, the razors that were there, and there's a certain, you have to actually blue the razor, so you actually have to heat it up. Um, a pencil, a hanger, and, and some wire, and some toilet paper. They were able to make an AM receiver that runs without batteries. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Not the greatest thing. There is a challenge. Um, the headsets we have now are not using crystal, so you'll have to figure out how to make that crystal uh, speaker. Or if you buy a crystal speaker, like five bucks, you can get some of those from uh, CC Craig or something like that. Thing to add to your bug out bag that. Oh, who, do, who doesn't know what a bug out bag is? And that's fine. Well, I'll tell you anyway. A bug out bag is that bag that I need to leave right now. It has your basic essentials. Most, most bug out bags or are, are, are survivalists will never even think of that crystal earpiece. They'll be like, oh, let's get a ham radio, which is definitely a great thing, and I'm not denouncing it. I mean, you can actually pick up some of those feeds from there. Um, but they don't think about those small little intricate geek things that we would have. Integrated regulators, and this is as, hard, as far as my hardware hacking goes. But an inter, 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 a 5 volt integrated regulator is almost in every electronic device. Just using that, you can set up here some way of at least getting some kind of power. If you have a GPS system and you think that's going to be your way of there and you have no power and you didn't get the solar piece, and if anyone's tried using the solar or recharging those, it'll take you quite a while. Um, this is at least one way. It's basically not, it's just a, some batteries. Pit the two leads, and it'll actually regulate your, uh, your electricity. Defense. How many people have carry firearms or have firearms? I think that's going to be your way there. What happens when the – how many people reload? Not that many, but still, it's a good thing to know. How many people have a whole stock of reloads? It's good, but eventually that will run out, possibly. You're going to need other things, and I'm not saying anything against them. You're going to need, one, you're going to have to have some alarm system. ADT is not going to work. I'm sorry. It's not going to work. They're not going to come to your house. Bubble wrap, broken glass. Put broken glass in your doorways and your windows. You'll know if someone's coming through there because you'll hear, ah, right? Um, bells, when putting them on your doors. Bubble wrap in front of your door. You'll hear the pop, 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 and then you, if you've got ammo, you pop, pop, pop back. Greeting cards, coolest things in the world. Everybody loves getting those stupid greeting cards that are like, ah, unless it's Star Wars or something cool, right? Put one of those in the windows, and I'm sure there's a lot better hackers in here that can make this really amplified and scare the hell out of someone. But that, that, that little, that little $2, two dollar card, you put that in a window or a doorway, you'll know if someone's coming. Maybe, depending on how loud it is. And once all the electricity's off, you'll hear everything. Now we're starting to get a little more defensive. Pepper spray, it's a little, little bit of pain. You've got a few things here. So on, on the left here, we've got a, a powder puff. Basically, it's cayenne pepper, baby powder, and a squeeze bottle. One time, just kind of puff right in the face. Sure doesn't feel really great. Or if you're really feeling mean, you go for more of a persistent thing. So the baby oil will stick, the cayenne pepper will burn, and the alcohol will help. And you put that in a spray bottle. How many people knew you could actually injure someone with paper, besides a paper cut? Now, there's a few. And there's directions on here. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'll let you guys read that. So basically, it's a paper mache. We've all done paper mache to make some kind of volcano or some crazy thing, right? You basically use this, fold this several times, 13 times, 
let it dry overnight, and you can pierce someone with, it, with this. It sounds very vicious. Or, if you don't like piercing people, you can just beat them to death. Rolling up a paper, that, that little fulcrum piece right there, I might use the wrong word, I apologize. Definitely will hurt. And I'm sure your dog's just being like, ow, that hurts. But using that as a side piece definitely will cause, cause a, little, a little bit of blunt. Or you can take it up to the next notch. For your martial artists out there, you probably already know what this is. Um, this is called a copo. But you can just use this as anything. Or you can buy the Gintu 2012 because it slices and dices and chops out zombie brains. The other thing is knowing where to use it. It's great having, okay, I can fold up a piece of paper and I can smack them, but if you don't know where to actually cause some type of impact, you're, you're kind of, well, ass out. And then, how many people have Kevlar? You might not want to even ask that question. <laughs> not everybody here is going to have body armor of some way, shape, or form. Here, using basically, again, paper mache, you can, and I have not tested this, Anyone wants to try and be the dummy for the, the 22 long range rounds, you can try. But it's been, test, it's been tested by someone to prove that you can do this. Huh? Ah, oh, say yes. I missed that. So all these things here, the whole talk here is really just to get you to start thinking about this is your situation. This is kind of how society is, how our, how our job actually affects the world. The security part definitely affects the world, and we harp about it every day. But I don't think we understand really that ramifications of what we really can be done. We talk about APT, and we talk about it scary. And a lot of people don't want to hear about that. But you need to start thinking about it. You need to practice. Everybody can say, oh, I watched, Le I watched Les or any of the other people on there and be like, oh, I read this book. You really need to go out there and practice. You need to test this stuff out. And you need to exercise because Ronald McDonald will come back and bite you. So definitely didn't make the full hour. If you want more information or um, follow the type of ty these type of tweets, I, I have an imdirt.org that I'm working on trying to get started, and this is really about the whole thing, self-reliance, not just survival, but every day of where your food comes from. How many people in their area, tomatoes are about 8 to $10? No? I know it was in Charlotte in, in the spring. Wait till about wintertime and see how it goes up. And with that, that's all I have. Yes, questions? Mm -hmm. Excellent point, yes. And boiling does help with, the, with that. Make sure that you boil it, I'd say, about 10 minutes. But you're, you're, it's a great point. I did talk about chemicals. And bacteria is obviously something that's common. Depending, yeah. Absolutely. And as if you continue to research, there are plants that we eat, like garlic, is an antibiotic. Exactly. All great points. So you should be up here doing this talk. Any questions? Well, I thank you for the talk. If you have any questions, please stop. How much